Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome YouTube. Welcome Facebook. Welcome everybody. Welcome to another Testimony Tuesday, y'all. We are excited. We are blessed. We are encouraged in the word of God. I thank you guys for tuning in. I thank you guys for just um, supporting me, doing, you know, going the extra mile to take out, taking out your time to just, you know, share my page or to just listen to the word of God. I just thank you for the support. And when you get a chance, push that subscribe button, like, and leave a comment. Let me know that, you know, God is blessing you or that the word, you know, you're receiving the word of God or, you know, just let me know what God is doing in your life. You know what I'm saying? Because that's so encouraging to the body of Christ when we get new souls coming in and they're giving their testimonies because you guys know we overcome by our testimony. Hallelujah. So, yes, I just want you guys to stay encouraged in the word. Just, you know, just stay active in the word of God. You know, just keep doing what you've been doing, you know, especially if you're doing it for the Lord and for the glory of God. OK, and you're doing his will. So I just want to keep you encouraged to do that. OK, hallelujah. And um, before we start, you guys, I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus, just that God will bless our time today. Hallelujah. We welcome the Holy Spirit into the presence. Hallelujah. We welcome the Father, God, the Son. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, and the Holy Ghost into our presence to just um, give us the word of inspiration that is concerning his children. We thank him. Hallelujah. For just all things, all things that he's doing in our life, that he's working out in our life. Hallelujah. So right now, we're just going to lift up a word of prayer to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord God. We just thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for waking us up today, Lord God. We thank you for giving us our daily bread, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for making provisions for us, Lord God. We know, Father God, that you are in control of all things concerning your children, Lord God. And we just lift everything to you, Lord God. We cast all of our cares, our burdens, Lord, Lord God, all of our stress, Lord God, all of our depression, whatever it is, Lord God, that we may be going through, we just put it at your feet, Father God, for we know, Lord God, that you are able, hallelujah, to do all things concerning your children, Lord God. You are able to work it out, Lord God. You are able to make the crooked road straight, Lord God. You are able to save those, Lord God, who are lost, Lord God, and in searching for you, Father God. You are able to pick them up right where they at, Lord God, and turn them, turn them around, Father God. If they are willing to repent, Father God, with a true heart to come to you, Lord God, we know that it is your will that all will be saved and none will be lost, Father God. So we just lift them up to you right now, Lord God. We lift up our ministry, hallelujah, beauty for ashes, Lord God. We just thank you for your time and anointing this time today, Lord God, that we come into your presence, Lord God, with thanksgiving and praise, Lord God, and with a word of worship and a word of encouragement encouragement to your children, Lord God. And we thank you for healing us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, Lord God. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So we will be coming from the book of Corinthians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you know, for the last um, couple of weeks, we've been talking about... Um, the body of Christ and staying connected to the to the um, vine, which is Jesus Christ. So that was the word of God last week, staying connected. Hallelujah. And the word before that was um, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. And uh, the week before, well, that was the week before the very first week and the week before, um, before that, we were talking about once we have presented our bodies as a living sacrifice, as acceptable and holy to the Lord, then what we are to do as the body of Christ and how we are to walk, you know, this is, so we're just continuing, continuing the word. Okay. Hallelujah. We're just continuing the, <clears throat> we're just continually the steps, continuing the steps as we grow, you know, so we know how to grow and we know what to do as we're growing and how to handle each situation depending on where we at in our growth, okay? Because we know that some of us are a little higher in our faith because we've been walking with God a little bit longer, okay? We know some are just coming into the faith. So, you know, we know it's a, it could be a little like, uh, uh, you know, but we know we got you. God got you. We got you. So we just here to keep you encouraged, to keep you going forward, and just to, you know, give you the word of God. Hallelujah. 
and I won't be before you long, okay? I try not to do to be too long, okay? Because I know everybody, you know, we still have to get up and go to work, and okay? But like I said, we are coming from the book of Corinthians. We're coming from 1 Corinthians, okay? Hallelujah. And we're going to start in chapter 5, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to do 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're also going to do 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But I'm not going to read the whole chapters on both of them. I'm just going to break down the diff uh, two of the chapters, okay? Because this is the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so what the Lord has put in my spirit, hallelujah, the lesson for today is called taking inventory. Hallelujah. It's taking self-inventory, taking inventory of yourself, okay? Making sure that you are in check, okay? You know how we say check yourself? This is what we're doing. We are checking ourselves. We're checking our surroundings, okay? We're checking our walk, okay? Who we surround ourselves with. Who are we um, following in our faith walk? You know, what are we doing? You know, how are we conduct conducting ourselves, okay? Hallelujah. And what to stay away from as we are in this walk. Because as we know, as we grow, that... When um, we come out the world, hallelujah, when he said, be ye separated, we have to come from among them. We come from among the world. That means when you come out the world, you know, and you coming into the body of Christ, we have to remain in Christ. We have to remain in the vine. So we have to separate ourselves from certain things and certain people who we used to be around and who we used to be when we were in the world. Okay. And so just so we can be clear, okay, on who and what not to be around and who and what not to do. We got it in the word of God. Okay. So this way we don't have to be guessing who we can hang with and who we can't. The word of God make it very clear. Okay. God makes everything so simple. Okay. To you that you understand who and what not to deal with. Okay. Hallelujah. Because we want to keep our, we want to keep our walk anointed. Okay. We want to keep our walk blessed. We want to stay under the covering of God. And so when, in order for us to do that, we have to follow and be obedient to his word and to his instructions, okay? We can't do this ourselves. We have to do this with Christ, okay? Hallelujah. So I'm going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm going to start at verse 7, okay? I hope and pray you guys have your Bibles with you because this is like a miniature Bible study and everything I do is from the word of God. And I want you guys to be able to see for yourself. You know, I'm a visual person. I like to see what somebody's talking about if I can, you know what I'm saying? So hallelujah. So first Corinthians chapter five, and I'm going to start at verse seven. Hallelujah. So the word of God says, and this is um one of the epistles of our brother Paul. Hallelujah. And it says, Purge out, therefore, the old leaving, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleaving. For even Christ, our pass, our sorry, even Christ, our Passover is sanctified for us. Hallelujah. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaving, neither with the leaving of malice and wickedness, but with the unleaving bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. And I'm in verse nine. It says, I wrote unto you in the epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covet covetous or extortioners or the idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. I know that sounds like a little crazy because the wording of it, because I'm coming from the old, um, is this the new King James or the old? It's just a King James. So this is the old version, y'all. I got the old version of King James. That's why I got all those thousand, thousand stuff. But anyway, continuing the word, I'm coming out of verse 11 now. It says, but now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such and one know not to eat. So basically what the brother Paul is saying in this epistle is that when we come out of the world, okay, we come out of fornication. Hallelujah. We come out of 
extortionists. We come out of drunkenness. We come out of um, covetousness and um, idolatry and all these things. When we come out of the world and into the body of Christ, we leave all these things, okay? So when we leave these things, we can't go back to these things, okay? So let me continue. It says, verse 12, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? So he's saying, what 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 judge is he to judge the people who are outside of the body of Christ? We judge the people that's within Christ, okay? He said, then it says in verse 13, it says, but them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away from among yourselves the wicked person. So he's saying we are to judge ourselves and the ones that we supposed to roll with, which is in the body of Christ. Okay. But God judges those who are out of the body of Christ. Okay. That is God's job because they have not come into, um, they haven't came, came into the submission of Christ. They haven't accepted Christ. They haven't believed in him, you know, to, um, leave those things behind and, leave the world and come into the spirit of God. Okay. I'm trying to simplify it for you guys. So you guys could understand it. Okay. I don't want to try and use big words or nothing like that. I'm just making it real simple and plain the way God does. So, um, I'm going to be starting in chapter six. Okay. And I'm going to read verse nine and it says, so this is first Corinthians chapter six and I'm starting at verse nine. Okay. I just finished Chapter five, and I'm going into verse nine. Hallelujah. And it says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go down to verse 14 in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, okay? And it says, and God has raised both, I'm sorry, and God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Hallelujah. We are the members of Christ. Hallelujah. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. So he said, once you become in the body of Christ, are we going to take the body of Christ and do to our body what a harlot would do who is not a part of the body of Christ? God forbid. No, we are not. That's not what we're doing. Hallelujah. We came out of that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It says, God forbid. And I'm coming in verse 16. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh, okay? So we know that when two people come together, when two bodies come together, they become one. So that's what they're saying. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 17, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, okay? So when we come into the Lord, hallelujah, we're not coming in as our body, our flesh, okay? We come in into the spirit, hallelujah. And it says, verse 18, so flee fornication, I'm sorry, you don't say so. I add that, but I'm letting you know. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication, sorry, he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. So <clears throat> when you fornicate, not only are you sinning, but you're sinning also against your own body, your own flesh. You you pretty much abusing your own self. Okay. Hallelujah. And in verse 19 says, what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God and ye are not of your own. So we are not of our own. Our body belongs to the Lord. Okay. 
Hallelujah. And it says, verse 20, for ye are brought with a price. Therefore, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So hallelujah. <clears throat> so basically what the word of God is saying is once we come out of the world, hallelujah, we have to separate ourselves from the world, meaning we have to separate ourselves from idolaters, fornicators, adulterers, infamous, infamous, abusers, drunkards, thieves, revelers, extortioners. These are the people we are not to um we are not to hang out with, okay? This is what God is saying. We cannot hang with these people. And you and the reason why we can't hang with them is because now we are new creatures in Christ. We belong to Christ. So now we are supposed to be doing the things of Christ, okay? And so the things of Christ are against the things of the world. Hallelujah. So these things which are sins, okay? These things are the things that God has called us out of. Hallelujah. So we can't go back into it. Okay. Especially when you knew in the body of Christ, you have to surround yourself with people of the same mind. And this is what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. We have to put ourselves around like-minded people. We have to put ourselves with people who are going the same way we're going, which is up. Hallelujah. So we got to surround ourselves with the opposite of this. Okay. Because <clears throat> knowing when you come out of the world, most of the friends that you have, hallelujah, are the friends of the world, okay? Because so, we, we we were in the world at one time. And the people we hung out with are people we had things in common with, okay? We had things in common with these kind of people, okay? Because once we were those people, okay? We were drunkards. We were idolaters. We were fornicators, okay? We were all this. We were thieves. We were liars. We were doing all these things, okay? None of us, hallelujah, none of us. We all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. We all have, hallelujah. So let's, let's, let's not think that we better than anybody because that's not what God is saying, okay? He's not saying that now that we in the body of Christ that we're just so much better. No, but what he's saying is to keep us from committing these sins again, we have to separate ourselves from them. Okay, we're not to eat with them. We're not to hang with them. We're not to, you know, and you know, some of us, when you're going out to in the world to, um, you know, bring souls in, you know, it's one thing when you're going out to bring people into the to the to God. Okay, but we don't have to act the way they're acting. Okay, because then what will separate us from them if we're doing the same thing? We can't bring souls in if we sitting right there getting drunk with them and everything you know we can't do that because it's, it's like hypocrisy you know we it's, it's it's just don't go together we can't be you know talking about god and, and everything and then the next thing you know we out here cussing people out you know we insulting in, insulting people we talking bad about them we can't do that because then we're, the hip, we're hypocrites so that's what i the um the brother paul is saying we have to separate ourselves from them. We have nothing to do with them, okay? We can't put ourselves in a position, okay, where we're supposed to be the children of God, but we're hanging out with the children of Satan. That don't work. That don't go hand in hand, okay? Because what's going uh, what's going to end up happening is the children of Satan is going to end up overtaking you, okay? And you're going to end up backsliding okay and that's what we don't want you to do this is what the this is why the lord is saying you have to separate yourself from them okay it's okay to love people from a distance okay see what i learned i had to learn this the hard way too because when i meet people or just when i've been um in the friendships with people for such a long time you know I have, I had, I don't anymore because God has released me from that. Thank you, Jesus. I had a tendency to keep myself surrounded by him, you know, and then I would find myself backsliding. I would find myself doing things that I shouldn't be doing or, you know, going places that I should not be going. That's because I was trying to still hang out with my friends because I loved my friends. You know, I wanted to still have that connection, but they weren't going the same way I was going. You know, they... The journey that God had for me was not the journey he had for them during that time. So I had to separate myself from them and I had to find like-minded people, okay? I had to surround myself with people who are doing the same thing I'm doing, who's 
trying to go to heaven, that's trying to get the word of God, that's trying to understand who God is, that's trying to understand who we are in Christ and what Christ wants us to do. Because we know that we are not of ourselves. We know that we didn't create ourselves. We know that God created us. And since he created us, he created us for a purpose. So I wanted to find my purpose in life, okay? And I was, I'm still determined to do that. I'm determined to live out the purpose, the God-given purpose that he put me on this earth to do. So in order for me to do that, I had to separate myself. I had, sometimes that's not easy, okay? Because it could get lonely. It can get lonely, but you are not alone, okay? You are not alone because you have a whole body of Christ. If you would just, you know, reach out and try to, you know, find people that, you know, um, we have a whole bunch of um great um ministers and prophets and pastors over the internet and that you can get in touch with people that you know that you can join into um praise and worship groups people who are actually walking this life walking this word and living this lifestyle okay there's people out there that's actually doing this and been doing it for a very long time and they know exactly what you need to keep you encouraged and to point you in the right direction okay so that's what god wants us to do he wants us to stay in the right direction he don't want us to get caught up and fall back okay so that's why he says we have to separate ourselves from them we can't eat with them you know we can't because then we're gonna end up we're gonna end up slipping we're gonna end up slipping so when i was looking up these words because i wanted you guys to really understand when God, when God says something, he really means it. God is not changing his laws, his commandments, his statutes. God is not changing his righteousness for this world, okay? This world has totally, totally lost their mind, okay? <laughs> lost their mind. They have totally turned everything around. It's like in this age and time, good, bad is good and good is bad. It's like when you try to take up for right, people come at you in all kinds of ways and trying to tell you like, always trying to say, only God can judge me. But let me tell you something. Yeah, God is judging you. And you better be real careful because if you're not, you're going to end up going to hell because you don't want to take accountability for the lifestyle that you live in. You know, you don't want to take accountability. You don't want to accept that the way you are living, the things you are doing is not the will of God. Okay, it's not. Okay, depending on how you live in, you know, I don't have to be the one to uh, keep telling you, um, don't do what you're doing. You know, okay, we have a conscience. God gives us all of conscience and we know when we are doing something that is not right and when we're doing something that's wrong. We know, okay, so it's not like I, you a little three-year-old or two-year-old and I got to keep telling you, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. You know, you at the age now where you know when you're doing right and when you're doing wrong, okay, point blank, period. But we know, we living in a world where people don't want to take accountability for the wrong that they're doing because they like living the way they they live in, okay? They comfortable living the way they live in, okay? But God said, come from among them, separate yourself from the world, be tra transformed. Don't you know conform to this world? Don't let this world send you somewhere that you don't want to be, okay? Because I'm telling you, everybody ain't going to heaven. I just want y'all to know that, okay? We got this thing thinking that when everybody die, they end up in heaven. No, okay? Everybody ain't going to heaven. You ain't finna be it, living in this world all corrupt, doing all the things that God tell you not to do. And when you pass away, you think you're going to go to It's not. It don't work that way. You got to start now, okay? God is a forgiving God, but God ain't no fool. No, you can't play with God, okay? You can't manipulate God, okay? You cannot bargain with God. No, you can't do none of those things. When God says something, that's what it is. Point blank, period, the end. You either going to do it or you're not, okay? That's the end of it. You don't have to keep discussing it. If God tell you not to do it, don't do it, okay? And it ain't me. It ain't me telling if, if he using me as the voice, okay, in the face, <laughs> okay, as a poster child to just give you the word of God, that's all I'm doing. Don't think... I'm the one condemning you because let me tell you something. I got to make sure I check myself every day. I got to make sure I'm doing the right thing. I got to make sure my thoughts are the thoughts of God. Okay, I got to keep this mind in check. So I ain't got time to be worried about how y'all about to backslide or if you're going to backslide or if you're going to stay. I can't be too worried about you guys like that because I got to have confidence 
and faith enough that you're going to be strong enough, okay? Because we got to help each other. We got to keep each other encouraged, you know? Because as I'm encouraging you, I'm also encouraging myself to stay strong and to, you know, because, you know, we we all live in this world, but we all don't have to be a part of what the world is doing. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So, yes. So, let's continue the Word of God. And it says in verse 11, it says, And such were some of you, but ye are washed but ye are sanctified. So God has washed us. We have been washed. We have been sanctified. We have been justified through God. God has justified us. When we came to God and we gave our life to him and we turned our, we repented and we turned our life around, excuse me, we become new creatures in Christ. God washed us. He washed us from those sins. He washed us from the guilt. He washed us from the the shame, you know, he washed us from the depression and the stress of this life and of the enemy. He took us out of that. So why would we want to go back there? Okay. We knew when we was doing it, that we was, it wasn't anything good. We wasn't happy. We act like we was happy. We thought we was happy, you know, because when you're in a drunken state of mind and you high and you out here partying, have fun, you haven't, you happy during, for the moment. But when you go home and all the partying is over, you know what I'm saying? And you, in your sober mind, you're miserable, you know? You're probably even more miserable because during them drunken stages or them high stages, you probably did something that you didn't want to do or you regret doing, you know what I'm saying? Or you ashamed of doing. So God has taken that from us, okay? He took us, he's taken us out of those things that made us feel those, that way. And then he's taken away the shame that we feel or any of the regret that we feel because now we are new. You know, we can, we can walk with our head held high, no matter what we did in the past, because knowing God forgive, has forgiven us, and now I can move forward with my life, and I could do the right thing now. Now I could, now God could use me for his glory, okay? Instead of Satan using me to just go to hell, you know? We don't, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. We want to, we want to give God all the praise. We want our life to be a life that is acceptable, and holy to the Lord, okay? We want to live a life that God is pleasing with, okay? We want to live a life that God is like, you know what? That's my child, and nothing you say or nothing you try to do is going to prosper because that's my child. I have her. I have him, okay? Because my child has changed. My child is doing the right thing. My child is on the right track, so I'm going to make sure Hallelujah. I'm going to make sure I'm going to cover my child. Okay. And that's what God is going to do. It might not, you might not feel it or you might not think it because of course the devil going to be coming at you because he mad. The devil going to, let me tell you something. When you come out of the world, okay, the devil was going to use every tactic, every tool, every person, every part of anything of your life that he can use to try to get you back. Okay. He'll start bringing in people who, you know, like, he'll, he'll just do anything, you know, he'll, he'll play with your mind so hard and try to get you doubting God and got, doubting God's word and everything. He'll come so hard at you because that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to think, okay, I, you can't, you can't change. You know, he wants you to think, nah, you're not, you're not good enough for that. Or you think you too good now, you know, he tried to use People coming at you talking about you, but it's all right because they was gonna talk. They were talking about you when you was doing the same thing they doing. So they gonna talk about you when you ain't doing the same thing. They just gonna talk about you because that's what they do. Okay, that's what they do. People talk. Okay, but we can't. We can't worry about what people saying. Okay, because we all we worry about is what God is saying. Okay, because that's what matters at the end of the day. Okay, that is what matters at the end of the day. What God is saying. What is what is God is saying about you? Ask yourself that question. For, for real, I'm, this is a this is a deep question. Ask yourself, like right now, what is God saying about you and about your life? Let's be honest, okay? We talking about God. We ain't talking about people. We talking about the true living God, the God who cannot lie, okay? The God of spirit and truth. So just think about the life that you live in right now. What do you think, what you think God is saying about your life right now? Do you, is it a, a life that God is proud of that, you know, he, he's just like, so like, yes, my child is doing it. My child is out there, you know, or is it not, you know, you got to really, really, that's what I'm saying. We taking self inventory. 
okay? This lesson is talking about self-inventory. We have to check ourselves, okay? We got to check ourselves. Who are you hanging around with, you know? What is still in your life that should not be there, okay? And why is it there that you feel like you can't let it go, you know? What is more, what's more important than your salvation, okay? What's more important than that unshakable joy, hallelujah? What's more important than the peace of the Lord over your life? What's more important than being covered under the blood of Jesus, hallelujah? What's more important than being a part of the kingdom of God? What's, what's more important than that? Now, if you can find something that's more important than that, please comment and, and let me know because... Um, I want to know about that, okay? Because I done tried a lot of things and I have not, it's not one thing that I found that is better than, or more important. But if you guys found something, let me know. Please leave a comment and let me know, okay? Because I just want to see what's going on out there, all right? You know, I might be too busy reading my Bible. I might miss something, you know, but I doubt it. But let me know, leave a comment, let me know. And like, subscribe, okay? And let me know what's more important than being a follower of Christ, okay? Hallelujah. So, and then I'm just gonna go over verse, um, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 17. So it says, no, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go over verse 16. It says, what know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. Hallelujah. So, what Paul is saying is fornicators, adulterers, abusers, thieves, these are these people are looked at as harlots, okay? And we know harlots in the Bible, the word they use the word harlot, but the word is means prostitution or a whore, okay? God ain't playing with us, okay? God is being real specific about what he, he mean, okay? He let you know. And we are not those people. We are not prostitutes, okay? We are not whoremongers. We are not, the, the, that is not the body of Christ, okay? And the body of Christ can't lay with harlots. We cannot do it. It's, it's not possible. It's not possible. That's why the word of God says the, the flesh and the spirit is always in battle with each other. It's, it's constantly, we constantly in a battle with ourselves. We constantly in a battle with our flesh. We constantly fighting ourselves every day to, you know, to keep ourselves in the spirit. That's why the word of God, that's why Jesus said, stay connected to the vine. You have to stay in the vine, okay? We cannot get out of the word of God. We cannot get out of God's presence. We cannot get out of God's will, okay? Because when we do, then the devil is going to be right there waiting for us, okay? He's going to be right there waiting for us. And it's going to be harder because as you guys know, when... The Lord cleans you out and your body is changed and, you know, you're giving yourself to God and you got a clean new temple and everything. And then when you backslide, hallelujah, the word of God said that the, the spirit that left, okay, he goes out looking for another place to dwell in and he can find us. So he says, I'll go back to my home where I once was, okay, but he comes to the home and see that it's swept out and clean. But if you ain't connected to the branch, and he, there's an opening in the window. That spirit is coming. And guess what? He bringing seven more spirits with him. More outrageous than the one that you had. So now you have, not only are you going to dealing, are you going to be dealing with that old spirit man that you worked so hard to get rid of, but now he bringing seven more because he mad that you kicked him out. Okay. So now he going to give you something. He going, he about to give you a, he about to give you a run for your money now. Okay. And then you're going to be off. You're going to be off. You're going to be more off. Blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to get the word out. <laughs> You're going to be worse off now than you were before. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I was trying to get them words out. Hallelujah. And we don't want, and that's when God is trying to keep you from that. So God is telling you, so just to eliminate all that, he's just telling you, just stay away from them. Okay. Just separate yourself from them. Don't hang around them. And if you don't know the people that, if you don't know, I'm telling you right now, these are the people I don't want you to be around. I don't want you to be around fornicators, okay? And y'all saying, what is fornicators? I got the definition because you know I do definitions. Fornicators, to have sexual intercourse 
without being married. Wow. We it's a the world is running rampant with the fornicators, okay? Okay, let's be clear about that, okay? So fornicators, we can't hang with fornicators, you know. We all look, I'm I'm telling you the word of God, don't get mad at me. I'm I'm the vessel, okay, and I'm gonna say it the way God has given it, okay? So if you've got a problem, take it up with God, okay? And he'll let you know, okay? Hallelujah. He says, stay away from adulterers, idolaters. You know, idolaters, those are, I'm going to give you the definition. A person that admires intensely and often blindedly, one that is not usually a subject of worship. So, idolater is somebody that is an idol worshiper that worships any, anything that is not God, okay? Anyone that is not God. It could be a thing. It could be a person. It could be anything that you choose to, to worship that is not our creator, our heavenly father, okay? Because we do know there is only one God, right? We do know this, right? The world have many idols, but we know there's only one true God. You guys do know that. There's only one true God that actually can hear you when you pray. Hallelujah. That when you are, it's only one God, okay? Okay, Hallelujah. And that is Jehovah. Hi, Thank you. Yah, ha, ta, ta, Jehovah, God, is the great I am, okay? Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Let's not get that twisted. I don't care. I don't care how many religions is out there, how many um, denominations is out there. It's only one God, okay? One God. Hallelujah. And it says, hallelujah, stay away from adulterers, okay? We know what the word adultery means, okay? It's someone who is um, for, having sex who breaks wedlock. Basically, someone who cheats on their wife or cheats on their husband, okay? Adultery, okay? We have to stay away from people like that, okay? But we also have to pray for these same people because we got you got to remember, we were once, we were once these people. Okay, and somebody prayers, hallelujah, somebody prayers of the righteous avail as much helped us come out of it. So we have to pray. Okay, we don't, we're not out here to hate these people. We're not out here shaming these people like that. That's not what we're here to do. We are caught into another, into some, to a, to the body of Christ. But when we're caught to something greater, we still have to pray for those who are still lost in the world, who are still blinded. Okay, and who are still being deceived by Satan. We have to pray for their salvation, okay? That's what we do. We're not picking on them, okay? We're out here with love. We're loving them. We're still loving them, but we're loving them to God, okay? We're loving them out of the situation, okay? But that don't mean we have to put ourselves in a situation with them because you can love and pray for people from a distance and God will touch them right wherever they are, okay? Hallelujah. It says we have to stay away from effeminate infeminate okay so femininity so that means having feminine qualities untypical of a man not manly in appearance or manner so basically you know men acting like women or vice versa okay all right that's what that is it's in the word of god so don't like I said, if you got a problem, take it up with God, okay? Because I'm going to deliver the word the way he gave it to me, okay? Boldly. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Okay. So that's what he's saying. Men acting like women. Women acting like men. Okay? God know who he created you to be and what he wanted you to be, okay? But we know confusion. We know the devil is a liar. He plays on your mind he plays on your self-esteem he plays on your looks okay we know how the enemy is we know it's a lot of things that we have to be delivered from but we pray for these people okay like i said we ain't here hating on nothing nobody we don't hate we do everything in love but we have to know what we are not to be a part of okay we have to know where god is calling us out of us okay calling us out of okay hallelujah and it says, uh, the next one, we have to stay away from people who are covetous, um, stay away from thieves, okay? People who are covetous. I hope I'm pronouncing that word right, okay? 
but it says having or marked by an eager and often often selfish desire especially for material possessions so we got to stay away from people who all they they think about is materialistic things they so materialistic you know what i'm saying they'll do anything to you know to have that new car or that latest watch or that latest purse you know what i'm saying there's so many like they got these songs out here ha hallelujah the lord's telling they got these songs out here with women talking about i don't even i can't even say the song because it's so vulgar these songs songs are so vulgar but basically it's promoting prostitution basically like having sex for birkin bags okay having sex you know for jewelry you know having, who wants to give everybody up for a purse come on like people do all the time so this is what the lord is talking about people do it all the time people do it so much that they make songs about it and they twerk into it you know what i'm saying so these are the things that god is calling us out from he's calling us out from it okay because this is not what we are here to do our body do not belong to ourselves so why would we lay down and give up our body that belongs to the lord for a birkin bag okay you are worth way much more than a birkin bag oh lord hallelujah thank you jesus there's not even a price that a person could put on you. Hallelujah. There's not a, a price. Okay. Hallelujah. Do you know Jesus Christ died? His, his body. He was the sacrifice. There's no price on that. Okay. So the Lord said our body does not belong to us. It belongs to him. And we putting Birkin bag prices on it. That's how much you think of yourself. Really? Come on now, y'all. We got we to gotta do better. And that's why God's telling us do better. Come out from among them. Come out from among them. Do better. Okay. Think better of yourself. Think more of yourself. Okay. You have all these great gifts and talents and all these skills that God gave you. You have God given talents and God given gifts. Okay. You don't have to go out there and, um, prostitute yourself. You got these gifts. If you would just connect yourself to the vine, if you would just connect yourself to God and, and ask him to show you who, who, what he had for you? What did you create me for, Lord God? I'm here for a reason and I'm still breathing and living because you think you thought about me today. You woke me up today. So what is my purpose? You guys have to do inventory. Okay. Do inventory. Ask these questions. Okay. Ask these questions. Okay. And God will tell you. And, um, he also said we have to stay away from, um, ra ra this word, ravelers right? That's the right word. Okay. Revelers, revels. So basically that word is, it means to, to use abusive language, speak about someone or something in a, um, negative or critical or insulting way. So, you know, when you pretty much like cussing somebody out or talking bad about a person, you know what I'm saying? Not speaking highly about a person, just pretty much down, down in the person. You know what I'm saying? He say, stay away from people like that. Stay away from people who always trying to come at you and tell you how do you, how you need to be living your life. And when they not living their life right, you know, they always, you know, trying to curse you, trying to tell you, he said, stay away from them people. Okay. Stay away from people like that. Okay. Cause they use their words. Okay. They, there was a saying, um, when we was going up, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That is a lie, okay? From the pit of hell. The mental, I mean, verbal abuse is some is the most damaging abuse that you can ever do. And it's so sad because a lot of us used to, or some of us still, we verbally abuse our children in such a way that we have, we don't even know that we doing it because it's just been passed on or we, we just, it's, it's just so, it, it just like happens because we see it so much. We don't even realize that we are these people. We are revelers. We don't realize we are doing this. Okay. Because some of us was born into households where they cuss and they call their kids bees and MFs and you ain't gonna, you so stupid. We can never, ever talk to our children like that. Okay. We can never ever because what you are doing you are breaking a part of their self-esteem okay you are breaking you are breaking them down 
instead of building them up, okay? We are supposed to speak life into our children. We are supposed to speak life into our family, okay? We are supposed to speak love. So we can't be talking to our kids crazy like that. I just feel, when I hear that, I be people talking to their young little babies, little kids, you know, still in elementary, talk, talk calling them bees. You little bee, come over here or you... Uh, you little bad in, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying? Cause I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I don't, I'm trying not to curse or nothing like that, you know, because you know, the Lord is delivering me from cursing, you know, but so I'm trying my best not to, to do it, but y'all know what I'm saying. Okay. We can't talk to our kids like that. Okay. My boys, they're young princes. They're young men. Okay. They are not N-I-G-G's. Okay. They ain't none of those. Okay. My daughter is a beautiful black queen. She's a princess. She is not a B-I-T-C-H, okay? I can't talk to my children like that. I mean, that is disrespectful, not only to them, but that is disrespectful to the Lord because he created those children and he gave them to me to, to nurture and mature them and to bring them the right way. So for me to damage them is me damaging the gift and the blessing that God gave me. And I, and I don't want to do that, okay? I don't want to do that. I ain't saying I ain't never did it, okay? Because like I said, we are, we were a product of the environment we were in, but now we are in a whole new environment. So we have a whole new thinking. We have a whole new way of doing things, okay? And people who are like this, we have to stay away from them, okay? We have to stay away from them, okay? And like I said, we ain't, we ain't trying to hate on nobody. We ain't out here trying to make you feel bad about what you doing, how you living. But you, but if you're not living according to the word of God or the way God wants you to live, then if you feel in some type of way, that means God is trying to speak to you. Okay. And it's a good thing you feel it because that means you can receive it. Hallelujah. And then you can make the changes that's necessary. Okay. To get, to have a better life. Okay. So if you are doing any of these things or you are hanging out with any of these type of people, you know, separate yourself from them. And if you are like this, ask God to, for forgiveness. Okay. Repent. Okay. God is a merciful God. God is, he's waiting for you to repent. He's waiting for you to come back to him. Okay. And that's why he's given us this word because he wants you to know what he's not going to accept. Okay. He wants you to know what he's not standing for. And he wants you to know that no matter what the world says, he says no. Okay. No matter what the world is telling you, this is what God is telling you. Okay. This is what God is saying. He says, these people, I'm going to say the words he says. He says, nor extortioners shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? They will not inherit the kingdom of God. We want to be inheritors of the kingdom of God. Okay? So in order for us to do that, we have to live the word of God just the way God wants us to live it. Okay? We can't throw, you know, we can't be like, well... I could, I could do this, Lord, but I ain't going to do that. You know what I'm saying? That ain't how God work. You know, you got to give your, all your all to God, okay? You got to give it all to God. Because guess what? God is going to give nothing but all, to, all his all to you. He's going to give nothing but his best to you. So that's what he wants, okay? This is an exchange thing. We can't always be asking God for something and don't and not willing to give anything. You, it's, it's not like that, you know? Even everything you do, even when you're living in the world, you out there sacrificing something to get something. So you might as well sacrifice yourself as a living sacrifice to the Lord and get something great coming in instead of sacrificing yourself for nothing and getting nothing. Okay? Really. Like you sacrifice yourself to, to get nothing. Okay? But misery and hardship. Okay? And what might eventually lead you to hell if you continue living in that way. Okay, so basically that was the word of God. I know it was a little long and a little strong, okay? But, you know, we take a sip of the strong liquor every now and then. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing, y'all. I'm just playing. I'm just playing, okay? But God, is, you know, the word is true. The word is real, you know? So the word is real. We Sometimes it's get tough, you know? We growing in the word. We growing in Christ, Okay. We, we all not babies anymore. And, we, and the ones that are babies, we're going to teach our babies the right way, okay? We're going to tell, tell our babies the right way. We're going to put them on the right path, okay? We ain't going to lead our babies 
to the wrong path, okay? The, the world has done that enough, okay? Now we're getting our babies back in line, getting our babies back on the right path, okay? So they can go up, okay? Uh, hallelujah, all right? So I pray that you guys receive the word of God. I hope you guys understood it. I hope I um, uh, gave it to you guys um, simple enough for you guys to really like capture the word of God and the revelation of what he's saying, okay? Hallelujah. Like I said, I try to keep it simple and plain, you know, so everyone can understand. Hallelujah. So I just pray that everybody was able to understand the word of God. And I pray that you receive the word of God. Okay. And I just thank you for joining me today on this, another testimony Tuesday. And I just pray that you guys like keep reading your word. You know, I pray that your life is actually an action life. Okay. That you just not saying it, but you actually doing it, all right? Because there's, I mean, the rewards, the blessings, the just the feeling that you get from doing the right thing and knowing that you're doing the right thing and knowing that God is smiling down on you and saying, yes, my child, yes, my child. You know, I mean, the feeling, I can't, I can't even describe it to you because there's no words because there's a feeling that just comes over you it's just a joy that's just you know un. it's just a joy that's just i can't even verbalize it i can't even put it into words okay it's a feeling and we all should have this feeling okay so i just ask you to stay connected and do self do self inventory okay on yourself check yourself check yourself look at yourself and say hey lord is my life a life pleasing to you and don't try and compromise you know what i'm saying because a lot of us you know we not all the way in yet okay with some things that god is still working on us with and he gonna continue working on them until you get it okay and if you decide that you know lord i don't want it then you know hey that's a decision you made because god gave us free will okay god ain't that kind of god that's gonna make you do nothing he ain't gonna make you do anything he giving you a choice Okay, you could go left or you could go right. You could go up or you could go down. You could go forward or you could go backwards. That's it, okay? Ain't no in between with God, you know? He said, you look one, he'll spit you out. So you decide if God, if you want God to spit you out, okay? Just let, just, you know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, with that being said, hallelujah, I'm just going to close in prayer. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for another day to be a part of your kingdom, Lord God. Another opportunity, Lord God, to get the word out to your children, Lord God. I thank you for the souls, Lord God, that have been touched, Lord God, and that will be saved and delivered, Lord God. I thank you for true repentance for your children, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that whatever the devil tried to plan against us, Lord God, that it has been um it has been terminated, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We come against that enemy right now in the name of Jesus. We send the fire of heaven to destroy all altars, Lord God, and all demonic spirits, all divination, Lord God, all idolatry, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, all sorcerers and witchcraft, Lord God, that try to come against your people, that tries to come against our mind, Lord God. We cast those imaginations down and we bring it into submission of the word of God in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, as we go throughout the rest of our week, Lord, the rest of our day, Lord God, that you will cover us, Lord, under the blood of Jesus, that you will keep us, Lord, under your anointing, Lord, that you will protect us from the enemy, Lord God, and anything that would try to discourage us, Lord God, or try to make us look back, Lord God. We know we are moving forward, Lord God, and we are going higher, not just in you, but in our faith and in our glory, Lord. And you will get all the praise, the glory and honor from our life, Father God, because our life is your life, Lord. It belongs to you, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, and we give you all praise, glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. So thank you for joining me, you guys. I appreciate you guys. I love you so much. Have a blessed rest of your week. And I will see you back here next week. God willing. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Next week, Tuesday for Testimony Tuesday. Okay. Have a blessed and wonderful day and the rest of your week. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Love you. Bye. Hallelujah. Push stop right here. Hi. One second. Can you
Do you see what it doing? 